Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be um, doing a quick scene and we're going to be making some stained glass, some photorealistic stained glass. Um, so I start by just adding a platform for our object to sit on and now I'm going to add in just a reflective background backdrop thing just to um, just to give the render a background really if you wanted to composite this into something you could skip this step and just take over to a, um, a film sheet render And yeah, so now I'm hitting shift, shift apostrophe um, to drop my camera into fly mode. And I'm just positioning it somewhere where it looks all right. So the next thing I'm going to do after this is I'm going to drop in an environment map and I add an HDR. Um, this is going to be really important for photorealistic glass because the glass needs something to reflect. It won't look good if you're just going to try and render it in a blank scene. It'll always look wrong, so you need some form of environment map for the reflections and the refractions of the glass to take effect. So next I just drop in a sphere and I add a glass shader. Um, we're working in Eevee right now, but we will drop over to Cycles at the end. This is a cross-compatible workflow. So now I've got my glass ball. I drop into edit mode, I think now. And I start by just flattening out the bottom of the sphere. And then extruding it down to the little kind of plinth that I built. And then cutting off the top of the sphere. And then I just select the inside faces of the bowl that I want using the uh, ring loop and then a face loop rather. And then duplicating it. And then I just close it up at the bottom, creating a big end gone at the bottom of the bowl. And then I use loop tools to bridge the top of the bowl and then I just neaten that up and I add in an extra cut at the top to um, make it all look smooth now after this I start by adding in a or changing the roughness on my glass to um, to to zero percent roughness so I want to be starting now after I've done a little bit of shaping to the ball um, forgot that I did that um, I thought that I did that after I had done a bit of work with the shader so yeah I drop now um, I use proportional editing by the way to make those curved ridges. So yeah, I drop the glass shader to 0% rough. And then the next step is I drop over to my shader edit editor and I add in a texture. Um, so the first texture is just a roughness map, which I'm going to add in to roughness. And then I'm going to drop over now into paint mode and we're going to take a look at how we're going to be using this. So everything we're doing today is just within the internal painting tools of Blender. You're not going to need any kind of 
node based texture editor or anything to follow follow along so when we make our texture now what we're doing now is we're just adding a little bit of a thin film of grease and you can see if we paint white it goes up to 100% roughness so we want to be painting in just a light grey for everything we're painting today and for good reasons um, mainly that we want to be able to control the intensity of things afterwards so if we were to just clamp clamp a white down we'd get less control than using the method that we're going to use now so I start by adding in a texture now to my brush um, because what we're doing now is we're just again as I just said we're making a a thin film of grease that's going to cover pretty much any glass that you look at in real life um, it's very r rare to see a piece of glass that's perfectly smooth all over it's always going to have some streaky bits so I go up and I add one of the procedurals in blender to a brush I forgot here that my my brush was sent to set to black I think because if you start with white the brush will always work but if you start with black you've got to remember to um, change the color on the on the brush so in the end I decide on a stencil and remember to bring my brush back up to the gray and I just start by painting in the grease layer so then I move over to a smudge tool and you can hopefully see what that's done to the glass um, it's just given us a spot where it's very slightly rougher than um, it's smooth so I start now and I just smudge the blobs that I've made all over so it looks like cloth streaks on the glass so I decide now that I'm pretty much happy with that and we go on now to start making the stained glass look So I add in another texture, this time a displacement map. And now I just start adding add in the displacement to the displacement output in the node editor. And then I just start by painting in some some dots, and I just start off with some dots just to see what the shade is going to do. Because sometimes displacement can be a bit tricky. Um, sometimes when your displacement comes in, it's just unworkably unworkably high or unworkably low for whatever reasons but in this case it's actually alright so I just start by taking a look at what the displacement's done to the glass and then moving over again to the smear tool to create the streaks and this time we're not creating more grease we're actually sculpting in using the displacement map where the glass stains are going to be so I start out just kind of making some patterns that I think are going to turn out to be aesthetic. And 
and then drop back into a preview. So now back into the shader window, I'm going to add in a multiply node. That's add math and then you select multiply. And then I'm just hitting shift on the keyboard and um, using that to fine tune the level of displacement that we need for this kind of object. When I'm happy and satisfied with that, which I am now, I play around with what clamping will look like and then I decide not to use it and then I start building my stained glass effect. So to do that, I just add in a mix node and another glass shader and then I add that to the mix node and I use my displacement as the mix factor for the two glass textures. So then I pull down the glass texture for the stain to be a red and then right now we can't really see anything and that's because we were painting in those greys and it is working right now um, but it's just too small to be seeable it's too low of, low of a mix so I start by adding in a another multiply between those two and I just flip them around and you can do that just to verify that your multiply is in the right signal chain and then I just start using that second multiply um, coming off that same masking texture we made and I just start bringing that up until we can see the red in our glass and now when we render this in cycles um, it's going to look pretty good um, so that's how you get the effect um, it's a little bit complicated to start out with but it's really really good workflow um, I hope this is really useful and I hope you can use this technique for whatever asset that you want to create. Um, thanks for watching.